try to just uh, try to switch off maybe the mobiles in the, in some flight mode or something so you will not get disturbed uh, and yeah let's start uh, so we're gonna start with uh, just closing our eyes we will leave our palms open on our lap we'll keep our back straight without any tension in it and we'll start with a simple exercises we'll raise our kundalini which you see on the screen important part is to do this with following it with our attention not just with hands And the next one will be, which we call Abandon, it's a protection technique for all our chakras. It goes from the left to the right and back. That is considered one time and we'll, we do seven total. Again, follow your hand with your attention. Great, now we can do a kind of abundant to the foot sock bucket. It's a circular motions on top, like from the left to the right. Uh, and after that, we'll put our feet in, in the foot sock. And we'll start with uh, balancing our right channel, which is usually the channel that creates lots of thoughts and activity in our body, in our subtle system. That's why it's my personal preference that we start with the right channel because it cools down your activity and brings you towards the meditation much faster. So let's do that. Um, We'll put our left hand towards the sky, just like this. And our right hand will uh, stay open on our lap. And inside of ourselves, with full sincerity, we just gonna request our mother Kundalini. Mother, please balance our right channel. Please remove all the thoughts, all the planning, all the worries. Please dissolve our, uh, all our ego, ambitions, overactivity and overthinking. And we're going to remain in silent meditation keeping our attention on top of our head and on the right channel. Allow the energy, the, the Kundalini, clear your right channel. You don't do anything, just complete relaxation and effortlessness.
any thoughts are troubling you, just uh, witness them without interacting, without engaging. Just witness them come and just go. Okay, very nice we can put our left hand back on our lap and now we'll focus on our left channel for this we'll put our right hand towards the ground or towards the earth and left hand will be st staying open on our lap again with a full sincerity we'll ask mother please balance our left channel remove all the thoughts from the past all the connection to the past all the conditionings all the over emotions all the over sensitivity please remove anything that drags me to the past drags my attention to the past again in this state we uh, will keep in meditation for a few moments keeping our attention on top of our head and on the left side of our subtle system
PR tension is uh, a little wobbly or troubling you, you can focus on your breathing, how you breathe in and breathe out. It helps to steady your attention. Give it just a few more moments. very nice uh, now we'll do a little bit of exercise for supporting our central channel for this we'll take our right hand and we will slowly raise it from the sitting point along the uh, along the along our spine in the front very slowly moving it towards the top of our head following with our attention. We do it two more times. And while doing the third time, we'll, uh, we'll put our right hand on top of our head. We'll apply a little bit of pressure and we'll do a circular motions on top of our head it will help us to fix our attention on our Sahasrara chakra which is the seventh chakra now we'll uh, leave the Palms open on our lap. Now we'll try to do a, a few exercises for our ego, that is the topic of our meditation today. Uh, actually, both ego and super ego I will later explain what it what it actually is uh, but for now we'll just take our hands palms and we'll put it on our on the sides of our head just like this and with a tiny bit of pressure we'll do the circular motions clockwise on the sides of our head Great. Now we just focus our attention fully on the top of our head and we'll meditate a little bit with, with music.
A few more moments with a silent meditation.
we can now slowly uh, open our eyes and we'll take a one minute break for, to rinse our feet and dispose the water. Um, whoever is not doing foot soak, you, ju you can just keep meditating and we'll be back soon. Okay, I hope everybody's back. Uh, and I feel like today uh, we'll just go straight to Sri Mataji's lecture about the ego. Um, please enjoy, and after that we'll have a sharing session, and we'll discuss discuss about the ego as well. Rahul, could you play the talk, please? Anything, it is what your ego desires you run after. Everybody feels that today I was thinking of telling you about the ego problem because I think everybody feels that that's the biggest problem they all have and there's a big ego trip uh, one gets into and they don't know what to do with it. So first part, I will tell you how the ego rises and how, what it does to us. The second, how to understand it, how to tackle the position of ego and put it in its own aspect. <clears throat> As you see in the map here, the yellow stuff that you see on top, is the ego. The balloon that is yellow is the ego. You see down below it starts from the Sadhishtana. This is the color of the bile within us. And this Swadhishtana chakra which is for our creativity is directly connected to that ego there. And when it starts rotating round the void and going to the various parts of the void, it collects all the problems of the void. Void is that green uh, circle within us 
where physically we have in the void we have uterus we have kidney it's a complete viscera all the intestines ascending transverse descending colon liver <coughs> is the is the upper part of liver more then also pancreas and the spleen so all the problems of these organs are collected by this chakra which moves it comes out of the nabhi chakra and moves round and round and round and collects all the problems it nourishes gives power the vital power to these organs and also it generates necessary power for our creative action it also collects the fat cells of the void convert it into the proper cells for the brain for its use for the gray matter all this work it has to do one chakra it manifests aortic plexus outside on the physical level we call it as aortic plexus and it has got six subplexuses which look after all these organs this is meant for our action when we go into action this chakra starts work by the first power which is on the left hand side we desire but by the second one we go into action and is called as kriya shakti now when this action starts within us it produces the by products or we can say all the problems of these organs which are to be deposited somewhere and they are all deposited in the brain as ego all the problems that we have out of these this creativity and the action of all these organs are to be counterbalanced and as a counterbalance the ego develops for example now i have to come to meet you all here i have to get out of the house i have to change i have to drive whatever it is then i came i had to put in effort i had to plan out how i am going to talk to you that i don't do normally but i'm saying that generally people do it and i put in the effort to come in now how am i to justify this all this effort what is the satisfaction that one gets out of doing this effort this kriya this action we go on doing some action and why should we do it after all action means any activity means exertion botheration problems the best is to sit at home and do nothing of the kind but we do not do that we take up challenges we rush up to it all this we do with our kriya shakti with our right action because we do action we have to have a satisfaction about it as a reaction to that ego develops if we do not have the ego we would not do anything is a fact but ego is the one that rationalizes all our madness 
the rat race we are running into. If we did not have the ego, we would not go into this nonsense. The more we try to rationalize our activities, the more ego develops to satisfy. All right, very good, very good. Now you are a successful man, see? You are a very successful man, you have got this, you have got that. Lots of misunderstandings creep in when we pamper our ego like this. Or I should say that when we are satisfied with our ego, that we really get lost. We get identified with our ego and not with ourselves. So if you do some work very well, supposing you have, say, made a beautiful poetry, or say, not po piece of poetry, but say, you have made a very good painting, then you would like people to appreciate. If they do not appreciate you, you think you have done nothing. Though you have done a beautiful poem uh, of a canvas, but still you will be so dissatisfied with yourself. Unless and until people appreciate you, they must garland you, they must say, oh, you are great, you are really unique, you are a genius. You know, many artists who created great art got trapped into this kind of misidentification. When they created some great art, the art could not give them satisfaction. They had to go to ego. And Mr. Ego would not be satisfied unless and until everybody says, yes, yes, you are very good, you have done this, you are a genius, you are this, you are that. That's how the ego develops then within us. But a situation can arise where even when we have done nothing, we want to take the credit. Then we call such a person egoistical, who says, I will do this, I have done this, I, 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 then we call him an egoistical person. Because he gives words to his ego, that's why we call him egoistical. But all of us have got this Mr. Ego there sitting on our heads. When it starts bloating, the more successful you are, the worse it is. The more you indulge into planning and thinking, the worse it is. The balloon goes on, you see, pumped, as if you are pumping a balloon, you see. The more you pump, the more it becomes. And you can never realize that you are not that ego. Then you start feeling very nice about it. Because everybody says, oh, what a great man he is. The whole society develops on those lines. Today only I was discussing about the way people give you COB, I don't know, VIP, <laughs> and MAD, like that. <laughs> and we carry those banners with us, and we expect everybody to respect those banners which are being given to us. Because we've done some work, Somebody has recognized us, branded it, stamped it, so we believe really this must be something great. So we accept that brand and we want to keep it up. So this is a doubly fixed thing that you are really rewarded for what work you are doing. That's why people start become nuisance also. Supposing in a society some people do not find any significance to their lives, then they will go to Oxford Street, stand there, wear funny dresses, start jumping and singing something nonsensical and pe make a nuisance out of themselves. You have seen people who paint their hair in different colors, put pencils in the noses, I think. <laughs> do all kinds of mad things just to attract the attention of others because we want to attract the attention of others because our ego is not yet satisfied. But this ego is never satisfied.
It goes on asking for more food, more food, and you enjoy it too. When such an ego is bloated within us, we cannot understand what we are doing. People can be fool you like that. It's very easy to be fool a person who is ego-oriented than to be fool a simple person. A simple-hearted man not, cannot be easily be fooled because he is not on a trip, you see. But those who are on an ego trip, you tell them that this is the best way to go to hell, they will be the first booking their seats. There will be a cure for it. And people would be asking for it, all right, if it is so, it's good. That is how many gurus in this world have come forward, have befooled you by telling you that you'll get these powers, those powers, that will happen, this will happen. And they know how to pamper your ego. For example, they might say, this is a world organization of spirituality, and you are the head of the world organization, and you believe it. Ego means misappropriation. You believe in it because you think that after all I must be something, and I have done this, I have done that. But actually what happens physically is then when this balloon spreads on your head all over, the aura of the brain surrounds the heart, normally, normally. But when there is ego problem, then ego surrounds the heart. And when ego surrounds the heart, the brain is cut off from the heart. So you are a non-integrated person, or we can say disintegrated. Your heart runs one side, your brain runs another side, your body runs third side, your emotions run fourth side. So four people running four horses, and that's how you are completely torn. I mean, it's impossible to stand on two stools, but if there are four with two legs, it's a big feat to exist. So. This kind of ego trip comes in by which you start behaving and living in this world in a very unnatural way. And if somebody says that, no, not your ego, not that, that's not you, you have to be yourself. Ego is not yourself. Do not be satisfied with this ego, then you don't like it. Because you are much higher than ego, much greater than ego, much more than what you think your ego can do. With ego, what, at the most, what can you do? Say. At the most, what can you do with your ego? What people have achieved through ego? Nothing. Whatever they have discovered, even in the sciences, has come from the unknown, from God's own treasures. If God has given you some knowledge of the unknown, you should not feel pampered about it and think that, oh, this is what we have found. No, He graciously gave you this knowledge which has come to you. So just take it with humility. And this ego is very, very dangerous for Kundalini awakening. Now you look at the diagram. Imagine the whole of your head is covered with that yellow stuff. And this blue thing becomes a very small one. So first of all, the desire 
to see itself is diminished. You see, you go for seeking as if you are going to a cinema hall. There is no combination of what you are thinking and your heart. You are not seeking from your heart. You are seeking just with your brains. Because you have read three, four books, there's a fashion everybody is seeking. Everybody is looking as if they are seeking something. So let us also seek. It is not coming from your heart because you can see that the activity of heart has become practically zero. You do not desire anything. It is what your ego desires you run after. Anything that doesn't satisfy your ego, you get upset about it. We'll take just a few moments of silence. Now slowly open our eyes and we'll move to the part where we discuss the meditation, the state. Um, so everybody's encouraged to turn the video on and share whatever is in your heart and uh, how you feel about ego. It's a subtle, a subtle topic, uh, partially because uh, the trick is that we can't really see uh, we can't really see how ego affects us unless we are in a state of witness 
where we can witness our actions and our decision decisions from the side. Um, so that's that's why I would say detachment, which we call in Sahaja Yoga, when you detach from from the situation, is very crucial in 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 dealing with ego. Uh, so yeah, I would like to hear um, your experiences and what what you what you feel about that. Maybe you want to share something, uh, some some situations where you manage to deal with your ego or how how you generally approach your ego. So please uh, share uh, share your experiences. Um, Whoever wants to start first. Cheryl, would you like to? Yes, yes, please. Oh, no, go, go ahead, Cheryl. <laughs> no, no. Uh, okay, yeah. Okay. Ego is a tough one. It is. 